Hello, this is Monday, October 10th, 2022. This is the Side Show. I'm Theodore Parker. Today, sun's out. Temperatures around 41, going up to 73. Still talking about the mask. I'm not sure what the positivity rate is at present, but, you know, if you need them, wear them. If you're going out around people, wear them. A little bit of prevention of the spread of COVID-19. And October marks the start of flu season. If you want to get that flu shot, consult with your primary physician. Also, another booster for COVID-19 vaccine. You know, there were the two primary shots, vaccinations, and a booster. Now there is another booster being offered. So if you consult with your physician, they'll tell you whether or not that's available for you. Monday, coming out of the weekend. Equals five and one, five and O, oh, excuse me, equals five and O oh in football. Has some baseball games going on. Basketball. Draymond Green and Poole. What was that anyway? Okay, if I don't know what's going on, I did see the video. And two things are a fact. Draymond is, being, is in the point where he's going to be considered for a contract extension. And so is Poole. Up for a contract extension. <clears throat> so. Exhibition games or preseason games are going on right now. And we're into the fall. And October, October has all those scary movies on. Waiting for the 31st for Halloween. So, the rest of the month you kind of got cut out for you. From September the 15th to October the 15th is Hispanic Heritage Month. A few more days left to that. September the 15th is because at least seven countries uh, received their independence on the 15th of September. Originally, it was probably just a week long, just like with black people celebrating their recognition time was originally a week and then extended to the full month of February. So Hispanic people had one week and extended it for a month, which runs from September 15th to October the 15th. And most of Independence and other days of recognition are compacted around September 15th forward. If you're watching on Facebook, like, comment, share. If you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Both those avenues are there. Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram are available to you to take advantage of. Anyway, so I'm perusing YouTube over the weekend. And um, I run across this one little show. I've seen it a couple of times, and it is ridiculous. But, you know, it's October month, and everybody's doing odd things, to put it mildly. So I thought I would just share this with you. So the caption on it is a video sh show with the host and so forth and so on. Um, Women doing things that make you go WTF. Now, right away, that caught my interest. <clears throat> Not just from a male perspective, but I just wanted, I was just curious. You know, I was just curious. So I'm not going to give you the whole shebang because it ran for about 20 minutes or whatever. So I'll just pick out a few highlights. So the first question up for consideration two women, and the question was, are you single or in a relationship? 
So one of the women responds, both. So the person that was asking the questions kind of pauses back and says, both, you're single and in a relationship. So this just opened the door to all kinds of female management of situations and comments and descriptions and things of that nature. So I was kind of laughing because it was funny to me, right? So then they get to the part where they start talking about the expectation differences between men and women. You know, what do women expect from a man and what do men expect from a woman and this and that and the other. So women had, in general, a list of about 10 things, okay? So the first thing was, and I probably can validate this from my personal experience, do you work, okay? And what kind of job do you have? And um, do you have a car, that type of thing. So it covered it like this. Needed a man that was working making six figures, and was at least six feet tall. So I said, well, oh, okay, I can slide on that one. I'm, I'm, I'm not six feet. And the very last thing out of all these list of things was, number 10, he has to care about her. So, <laughs> so you know, priorities, priorities. So he went to the men and asked the men, you know, what do you desire in a woman? So they had like a really short list, about three things, but it basically rounded out to they wanted a traditional woman. So in this day and age, you know, with so much stuff on the media and in the news and stuff like that, that's kind of like how it's set. So person said... <laughs> Finding a traditional woman nowadays is like seeing Bigfoot riding a unicorn. <clears throat> so I thought that was really funny. But really, it kind of takes to the fact, you know, that um, with young people, and I'm going to say this with a qualifier, as odd as it may sound and a little bit off the beaten track, I was young once. I was young once, okay? So, as a matter of fact, some of the people that were in the generation ahead of me are still around that could validate, speak on if they so desire and comment to the same thing. I was young once and they're still around to say that, okay? So, it comes down with Social media, you know, we get warnings and takes and things about the effect that it has on young people, decision-making process, how it affects them mentally, emotionally, um, <clears throat> their, their mental health, their physical health, and things of this nature. <clears throat> so I come up with two questions. Has social media changed dating? And the other question is, has social media changed romance? So you hear people in that finite group, quote unquote, young group that have their own take answers, qualifiers and everything else on this. But that's it. Has it changed dating and has it changed romance? So I'll just leave it out there if you want to put some fillers in the comment section either on Facebook, um, WhatsApp, Instagram, you can do that. If you want to do it on YouTube, you can throw some things in there as to what you feel about that. Okay, so that was my bit of humor for today, coming off into Halloween month. <clears throat> Technology. Meta warns as many as one million Facebook users that the logins may have been compromised. Facebook's owner Meta is warning that as many as 1 million users may have had their login information stolen. 
Meta's researchers have discovered more than 400 malicious Android and Apple apps designed to steal personal Facebook logins. A Meta spokesperson said the company is reaching out to the users who may be at risk. The applications are disguised as games, photo editors, and health and lifestyle services. Often app users are asked to log in with their Facebook, which enables hackers to steal logins and passwords. Google has removed those apps from the Google Play Store. Speaking of Google, Google had its annual launch day yesterday, launching a new Fitbit watch, which has many of the familiar features displayed in a round face and sells for $50 cheaper at $350. Google launch day. And coming back to Kentucky, Ariel Thompson crowned Miss Black Kentucky. During Sunday night ceremony, Ariel Thompson was crowned winner in front of 250 people, including family, <clears throat> excuse me, and friends at Memorial Auditorium. For the first time in more than a decade, the Commonwealth has a new Miss Black Kentucky USA. It's amazing to finally win something. I've always get second and or third, but to win, it feels surreal, Thompson said after her win. <clears throat> she would go on to compete nationally in the Miss Black USA pageant. So there we have it, a few things for Monday, October 10th, 2022. Rounding into the fall. So I've already told you about how to like and share, like and subscribe. Don't forget those comments on their questions. And again, this is a sideshow. I'm Theodore Parker. That's it. Hashtag.